we have a problem with the grinder let's uh take a look at it and see stick around all right what we got going on here it's not nothing serious I noticed the last uh, couple of batches of knives that I ground, this is where I ground my bevels and the shapes and all that, that um, uh, my metal is only hitting on the edges. Now what's causing that, I've already took it apart and looked at it and just take the belt off. Now the platen that comes with this, the factory one, is not is it moves a lot and it's not flat across it has to be perfectly flat so i took this piece of steel that's uh i think two inch yeah two inch steel to match the two inch belts and epoxied this on to it uh, when i first right after i got it and i don't know i don't remember how long i've had this and I don't remember how many hundreds of knives have been ground on it. But what has happened, uh, it's got a belly in the center here where it's worn down because this is not hardened steel. This is just regular, regular old welding steel. I know, probably can't see it on the camera. Let me move over here so maybe see, you can see daylight all the way through here, up and down. We'll get out here to the very edge and there's no daylight so that is why i'm getting sort of wonky grinds and having to go back and do it a couple of different times also if you put the square up to it this way you can see daylight through it so this has got to be replaced not a big job i don't think uh, it is raining today uh, it's not really cold for one thing at least but uh I'm going to take this off. Got to chip this epoxy out of it somehow. I can heat it up with a torch, I think, and uh, knock that off. And I want to get a piece of 2 inch steel that's already hardened. This, or something that's very, very hard. Because this will not harden, even if you try to heat treat it. Welding steel won't. I have some uh, quarter inch thick stainless. A big sheet of it out there still well not a big sheet but a good piece that i think is going to work just perfect but it's raining and i got to get out in the rain to fool with it and don't want to do that the finger my hands are dirty from working this morning but fingers okay and that also means i've got to tackle the zip wheels again but, uh, <laughs> i'll be more careful this time but if it slacks off raining after a while, I'll do that. If not, I'm not going to take it apart just yet, which all it is is two screws. Hold it in. Move around there and I'll show you that. Got a screw here and one there. And that whole platen, the whole thing comes off. So it's not a big, big, big job, but it's one that's got to be done before I grind any more knives. And I have... 12 more on the table plus plans for some more and I've got seven on the bench waiting for epoxy to dry everything dries slow in this damp cool weather and also I'm gonna come up about two more inches with it here and what that'll do is allow me to when I get a tall like a cleaver Unless I use unless I change jigs, it won't hit that platen for support. So I'm gonna make it just a little bit taller. Okay. We'll get back to this here shortly. In the meantime, this is what the grinding center looks like after a batch of knives. Filthy. So I gotta go might as well go ahead and clean up before I do anything. All right, here we go. I have epoxy drying on some knife handles, six or seven of them. 
I thought I'd jump back on this. It has cleared off, stopped raining, and the sun is out. All right. The zip wheel did not get me this time. There's my replacement. This will be the bottom. Now I've got to go over to the the uh, 4x36 and knock off all the slag. Uh, round these off like I want it. Put a 45 up here, but not quite a 45. Just beveled it up here a little bit. And then put it down and polish it real good. The back side where I'm going to epoxy it onto here. Then we'll take this off. Epoxy it, and by the time all that's done, it'll be time to close up for the day and let it dry overnight. All right, we got the platen off of there. I said very simple, just two screws. Now, I got a chisel and a hammer. Let's see if we can get this knocked loose without heating it up and all that. I've got it marked. That's the top, and I got it marked over here. I know my hands are going to get in the way, but. Uh, Now that could not have been easier. That's scary when it's that easy. <laughs> anyway, I know you can't see it on the camera, but I can see it with the eye. And I can feel it right in here, that big belly in there. Now this will be the new piece. Now this had a notch cut in it already, so I just sort of, I didn't get it matched real well, but that doesn't matter. It, uh, about an inch, inch and a half longer. And that'll take care of that little thing there, but, uh, there we go. And we'll keep that. Use it for something one day. Now I'm going to clean this up real good. Over on the one of the other sanders clean this up real good and i'm gonna rough up the back side of this which this, this is going to be the back side because i've got my little bevels ground right here that's just to keep the belt from rubbing on something sharp and when i get it glued on it's going to have to sit overnight because the only, only epoxy i have is not quick dry it's the 24 hour cure that's what's taking me so long with these knives also but uh I may run into town tomorrow and try to find some more because I'm just about out anyway. But there we go. Get this cleaned up. Knock the epoxy out of these holes and I'll show it to you when I start gluing it back up. Alright, we've got everything cleaned up. Let's mix this up some epoxy. Now this is Gorilla 5 minute set. I've had this for a long time. I don't care for the Gorilla brand. And I'm not sure why. I just It says clear but it dries a yellow color. To me so I don't like it for knife handles. But sometimes that's all you can get. Which is the reason I have it. And I have been asked how do you use epoxy. Some people have never used it. You just squeeze it out of the little syringe thing there. And mix it up for a few minutes. For a few seconds. It tells you an exact time. But it, as long as you mix it good it's fine. And this is more than I need. But that's okay too. I know this is the five minute quick set, but still, I'm not going to touch it until tomorrow. I'll put it on pretty heavy. It's going to run out the holes, run off the sides, which will be fun. won't hurt a thing. Make sure we've got plenty on there. And 
And I don't remember what brand I used before. Possibly could have been this. Because it was so long ago. But uh, it held well. But as you've seen, it also came loose pretty easy. But <laughs> All right, there we go. And that's a high-tech tool right there. There's a stick. And not being a wasteful person, let's wipe off our stick and we'll use that again. And again and again. Now, I also, when I sanded this smooth, took my file and cut some little just some little scratches in there I'm just gonna set it on there like this right about in the center and we'll put a clamp here because that belt's gonna ride right there in the center We'll put a clamp here. Let's get straight this way first. Clamp here. Then I'm just eyeballing it, make sure I got it pretty much in the center. Let's see, let's put one here. Let's grab one more clamp and put here, just for good measure. It pays to have a lot of these clamps. Now these are the Harbor Freight clamps. And in my experience, they work just as good as anything else. So, wipe that off. Now, but when it dries tomorrow, We'll get the random orbit sander and we'll polish this side up a little bit it's smooth but uh we'll just clean it up a little bit and as the belt runs on it it will finish smoothing it off so there we go now i gotta clean it off my hands and i got to go change my nasty band-aid mama sees that she's gonna get me so, there we go this works but I don't know if you can see it it says clear but that yellow tint on this it don't matter on knife handles to me it does but, uh, there we go we will finish this little project up tomorrow uh, as far as the video goes we're back <laughs> alright it is the next day our epoxy has dried I have been to town and got some more epoxy for my our knife projects over here. Uh, before I get back on those, let's go ahead and finish this up and get it back on the machine. All I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take a piece of 320 sandpaper. Smooth it just a little bit. Let me, let me get the electric sander out just to make sure. So I don't have any sharp edges. I was not getting the maximum use out of my belt with that belly and that other one. And I just had to order belts too for sanding belts, and they are expensive. And you might as well get the good ones. Because they last a lot longer and save you money in the long run. That ain't doing much. Let's get out the orbit sander.
plugging in on the table over here. Hang on. That one is wore out. Tip on these orbit sanders, if you wear it out or when you start to put it away for the day or when you're done with it, leave your pad on there. Because if you don't, junk will get all up in this Velcro. Put that on there like that. Noise alert. That's going to work now we'll go over to the grinder Ugh. boy when it's cold and you muck your hand like that it hurts don't it there we go some squeeze through all right before i put it back on we're going to give the grinder a good cleanup because it's a uh, it's time <laughs> all right we got the grinder cleaned up uh, somewhat now I'll go into a more thorough clean uh, I'm gonna move it here in the next few weeks uh, but for now it's clean I'm gonna put it back together sorry if I'm shivering folks I can't shake this cold out here it's really really cold in here today <clears throat> but we're gonna get it put back together anyway the screws go in here Leave it loose so we can get it adjusted because we'll have to square it up. Hang on, we'll get it here in just a minute. These screws are a little bit longer than they need to be. All right, now we know our tabletop here is square. Take our little square and put it up here and we want to come in. This is the hardest part of the whole job. <laughs> With your little bit of distance in there.
take what well, let's tighten down this bottom a little bit Right there, we're square. Right, we're square, so let's get it good and tight. Now if you notice, it's a little bit higher here, which is what I wanted. All right, we're square. Now let's check it out and see if it works. Belt back on there. Look good to me. Now, that is how you replace a homemade platen on a 2x42 knife grinder. Now, next project, separate video. My jig, I did not realize this piece here actually flexes a little bit. This metal is too thin and we can't have that. So I gotta find something to, uh, something stiffer to hold that. But that'll be in the next video. I can get by with this for now. <clears throat> like I said, pardon me for shivering, being cold. Uh, it is in the high 50s. And for us Florida people, that is cold. So, uh, <laughs> Y'all come get your weather. Y'all northern guys, come get your weather and take it home, would you please? Would you? Thank you. <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. And I will see y'all next time when we fix this jig.